So not gonna lie, kiddies, your uncle spurt is shagged right out. I mean, look at my eyes, they're basically cockroaches' piss holes in the snow. And the reason I'm knackered is because this week has had me busier than the pedo police at a 70s kids telly show reunion. With several smartphones and other bits all spaffed out simultaneously like the bloody world was about to end. I've had to snort a kilo of coffee grinds and spike my whiskey with cans of Monster just to keep from face planting my keyboard. Let's have a recap of all of that saucy gadget news. Jingle me! Techspert Weekly! Now first up this week was this lovely pair of Oppos, the Find X6 and the Find X6 Pro. They just launched over in China and hopefully they'll be hitting blighty soon. The Find X6s are typically bloody massive. The Pro is 6.82 inches, the regular model is 6.74. You get a small choice of colours while the Pro also comes with a brown leather arse option. Lovely. Speaking of the arse, a sizeable chunk of it is smothered by a camera cutout roughly the size of Jupiter. Both of these Find X6 phones serve up a 50 meg primary camera, although on the Pro this is upgraded to a super beefy 1 inch sensor, just like on the Xiaomi 13 Pro. You get slightly different 50 meg ultra wide angle sensors too, but the same 50 meg telephoto shooter with 3 times optical zoom, which Oppo also reckons is shit hot in the dark. You got Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 powering the Find X6 Pro, meanwhile on the regular Find X6 it's MediaTek's Dimensity 9200. So it either should be capable of running the latest, greatest games, while also serving up features like a bit of Wi-Fi 7 connectivity. Yum. And the Find X6 Pro model boasts a few other upgrades, including a proper LTPO AMOLED display with a sharper resolution and an eyeball popping 2500 nits of brightness. The battery is a butterfly's ball sack bigger at 5000 mAh versus 4800 with 100 watt rather than 80 watt wired charging. And it's only the Pro that can be charged sans cables. And no word on either of these bad boys coming to the UK just yet, but hopefully Oppo will do a global launch in the next month or so. I'd pretty much bet my spleen on it. What even is a spleen anyway? It's just one of those crap organs that doesn't do anything, isn't it? Oh god, this mine's probably f***ed anyway. But of course, because that wasn't already enough phones for one week, Xiaomi also finally decided to launch its latest affordable Redmi Note 12 blows outside of China. Four of the wee bleeders, no less, three of which have already landed on the doormat here at Techspert Towers. Seriously, the blows to booze ratio this week has been well off. If someone can send me a crate of whiskey instead of more work, that would be effing marvellous. Or even just a four pack of special brew. I'm not picky, I just need my brain to stop thinking things for a bit. So yes, yeah, several new Redmi's then, and the Danny Dangly dick of the bunch is this here Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, which serves up flagship style specs for a price that won't completely skint you. You've got a 200 meg main camera with optical image stabilisation, Dimensity 1080 chipset that can happily run Genshin Impact with super shiny graphics, a massive battery with 120 watt charging support, and a fantastic feature that replaces James Corden's smug f***ing face with a baboon's arse if he pops up on screen. Okay, so I kind of made up that last bit, but the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus 5G is still an absolute unit, and my full unboxing and tour is live right now. And if you fancy a bit of three-way action, well, stay tuned for my full side-by-side -side comparison with the Redmi Note 12 5G and the Redmi Note 12 Pro 5G. They're a wee bit cheaper, but they also won't make your taint tingle in quite the same fashion. And I've already shot that, so I just haven't bothered to edit it yet. And hey, this week we also saw something from Nothing. The A2 is an upgrade over Nothing's original wireless earbuds, offering an even more pleasurable experience when you push them inside of your head orifices. They're clever enough to tell you precisely how f your hearing is. In my case, ultra f possibly thanks to my hobby of screaming in the shower until I pass out cold. I actually got my jeans right here, and my full two-week review is live right now. Hip hip hooray, pop the Prosecco. And next up, Amazon also decided this would be a wonderful week to throw some new tellies at us. So say hello to the Fire TV Omni QLED, boasting a tasty 4K display with clever bollocks features like adaptive brightness, as well as a choice of four sizes between 43 and 65 inches. You've got HLG, HDR10+, HDR10 Plus Adaptive and Dolby Vision IQ support. And not exactly shocking given this is Amazon, the telly also offers Alexa Farfield voice control. So you don't even need to bother turning your head to look for the remote. Just sit and consume and occasionally stagger from the sofa when your slot bucket needs pouring down the sink. The Fire TV Omni QLED runs Amazon's ambient UI complete with a massive range of screensaver options. 
including fancy artworks from a whole bunch of famous dead people and dynamic screensavers that really bring your telly to life. Alexa can even pull a background out of its virtual bumhole on demand using ridiculous AI shenanigans, like these here fabricated photos of London with some crazy Northern Lights action. My request for a picture of James Corden being agonisingly molested by a randy rhino was sadly turned down. And if a bit of cloud gaming is right up your alley hole, well Amazon is also bringing its Luna streaming service to the UK for a small monthly fee. If you're completely skinned, you'll also be able to grab Amazon's 2 series and 4 series tellies here in the UK. The pre-orders are open now, they go on sale from April the 12th. As for that QLED model, well the big boy 65 inch model will also be available from April the 12th. The other sizes are following on June the 1st. Also this past week, I finally pulled my finger out of my arse in a metaphorical and also literal sense and checked out Infinix's bat bonkers 260 watt fast phone charging shenanigans. Smartphone charging is the latest battleground where manufacturers enthusiastically waggle their dangly bits at each other. And while the likes of Samsung and Google are happy to make do with 30 or 40 watt charging on their flagship blowers, Chinese companies are indulging in some serious dick waving with their triple digit recharge tech. Realme certainly impressed us last year with its 150 watt charging on the Neo 3, then Xiaomi hit back with its 210 watt Redmi Note 12 Explorer. Realme said, right, bugger you, mate, cop a load of our 240 watt GT3. But now Infinix has outdone even that effort with its 260 watt shenanigans. The charger is an absolute brick that weighs more than the actual phone it's charging. In this case, a special custom version of the Infinix Zero Ultra, modded so it can handle all of that hot wattage. And with the fast charge tech, that 4400 mAh battery hit 25% power in 60 seconds and was fully juiced up in just 7.5 minutes. Shaving over a minute off the charge time of the Realme GT3 in my personal tests. And you've also got 110 watt wireless charge and using another comically huge device, this time with a built-in fan to help prevent overheating. From drain to 100% takes just 16 minutes. And safety is hopefully guaranteed thanks to 142 protection mechanisms and 21 different temperature sensors. While this battery tech has undergone extensive laboratory testing and apparently only reduces to about 90% capacity after roughly a thousand charging cycles. Now the modded phone that I tested out won't actually be making it to UK stores, it's not a retail model or anything like that, but apparently a version of this quick charge technology will make it into Infinix's next Note smartphones. And of course there'll probably be about five of those buggers because why not? Not enough phones around. Have some more phones! And anyway, that was all of the tech launch good times for one. Oh no wait, no, Huawei also launched some new gear yesterday over in China. Some new phones and stuff, like uh, this bendy thing here. I mean, do we, do we really want to? Let's face it, we've all got better things to do and by this point in the show there's only usually about 12 people still watching anyway. Hi by the way, thanks for your continued support. If I knew how to do one of those Patreon things, I'd probably pimp the shit out of it right about here. But frankly, between this YouTube bollocks and my OnlyFans page, my hands are literally full. And that really was, as far as I'm aware, all of the nipple poppingly super awesome tech for this week. So now it's time for the part of the show that, you know the one, the one with the screaming and the gnashing of teeth and occasional full frontal nudity. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. Alright, so let's start this week with SJSTU who says, Using a Pixel 7 Pro this week, I can actually see your face without squinting. I'm not really sure that's a good thing, mate, to be honest. You might want to set your YouTube resolution to 40p just to make up for it. Noir says, Where I live, we call you ankle spurt. I mean, I've been called a lot worse, I guess. Ankle spurt. It sounds like some sort of mythological creature or something. A temperamental beast with a pickled liver and five arses. Imagine actually having five arses. That sounds just more trouble than it's worth. You wouldn't be allowed to eat sprouts in case you gassed an entire building to death. And every time you went to the toilet, it'd be like Russian roulette. Which one is it going to come out of? Now oh, bollocks, I've spattered the mirror again. And yeah, for anyone who's never watched a Techspert Weekly before, that's exactly the kind of top quality highbrow content you can expect week in, week out. QI it ain't. Cafe Mit Cutler says, Do not be frightened, your pancreas is safe as long as you wear those young men trousers. If the button is at or above the navel, it becomes dangerous. Liebe Grusa. Is that real? Is this actually some sort of scientific fact? Like the way you wear your trousers can actually damage your internals. I might just swap to Lycra just to be on the safe side. 
Michael W says, happy to hear about the Nothing 2 phone coming to the US. It means there's a tiny chance it might also migrate north to Canada. I mean, that's kind of the least you guys deserve. There's going to be some perks to live in, in Canada beyond poutine. Poutine and... yeah, poutine. Although I heard from a friend who lives there that mutton busting is apparently quite good fun too. I guess if you can't get Netflix or whatever. Next up, Matthew says, dang, I was really hoping that the Nothing Phone 2 would be smaller. Oh, hell yeah, a Nothing Phone Mini would be absolutely lush. I'd definitely 100% lick Cole Pierce's lovely face all over like a hyperactive puppy if he put out one of those bad boys. There's an incentive for you, Cole, mate. Get on it. Next up, Joe Hickey, who is purposefully Pixel, of course, says, it will be interesting to see how the Nothing Phone 2 is priced. Could be a great option if priced right. Yeah, I mean, I really, really hope they do manage to keep it at the same price and it's not going to be like OnePlus where they just add a little bit on generation after generation until it's not really that much cheaper than an Apple phone or a Samsung phone. Yeah, I'm confident that it'll come in at around the same sort of 400 to 450 pound price point to keep competitive. And next up, Brave One or BR7 Ave One says that the Nothing Phone One was okay, but each update got new bugs and issues here and there. My OnePlus 5 is faster, so I sold the Nothing Phone. And KD0604 says, how about a long-term review for the Nothing, especially with the latest Android 13 on there? I'm sorry to hear you've been having issues, Brave One. Uh, mine's been behaving fine, touch words. Uh, even with the new Nothing OS on top of Android 13 and everything, it's been okay. A couple of little glitches here and there, but nothing more than what you would expect. But yeah, still one of my favourite mid-range smartphones the last year, and not because of the flashy disco arse or any of that shenanigans as well. So yeah, definitely well up for returning to it and doing a proper long-term review. In a similar sort of vein, Richard Tapia says he's been having some issues with his Xperia 1 Mark III, and he wouldn't mind me revisiting some older flagships to see if the updates fixed any of the previous issues. Yeah, I mean, again, I'd love to. The problem is that back in the day, I used to do long-term reviews all the time because it was literally like Samsung, Apple, BlackBerry, Nokia, that was pretty much it. Then these days, of course, I've literally got boxes and boxes of smartphones arriving every single week. I swear, just over there, there's a pile of mobile phones that I haven't even taken out of the box yet, and it's given me heart palpitations. It's like my steam list of shame, except permanently in my line of sight for endless anxiety. I should just do what all the other tech YouTubers do and refuse to cover it if it's not Samsung or Apple unless I get paid in buckets of gold. Or even better, force a teenage intern to do all of the work for f all money and then take all the credit. Then I can really throw myself full time into my hobby of seeing just how much internet porn it takes to finally go completely blind. Cosmos G17 says, would love to see some collaborations with other tech enthusiasts. Yeah, I mean, I have had many grand aspirations of doing regular live shows with other tech guys that I know, but I'm always either too lazy or drunk to actually follow through on them. After last week's little reminiscent nostalgia fest about the iPhone XR, that absolute classic banger of a smartphone, uh, apparently Jane Moss is also watching the show on one. I just remembered actually after shooting last week's show that it was just after my iPhone XR review when Apple started completely blanking me. I used to get review samples from them all the time before then, but it was probably my lukewarm take on that overpriced slab that was like the final straw, I guess. Gotta say though, I am kind of relieved that they don't send me stuff anymore because first of all, they never actually used to send me the phones. I had to always go to an Apple store and sit through a wonderful patronizing indoctrination session with one of their cyborg employees where they basically speak down to you like your Jake Paul for about an hour or so. This is Safari. This is a web browser. The web is another word for the internet. Yeah, bollocks to all of that. And next up, uh, hello to Jazzy Fizzle 687 who's a borough lad. My commiserations, sir, just because you live in Middlesbrough, not for football-related reasons, obviously, because you lads are absolutely smashing it this season. Doing loads bloody better than us, that's for sure. Absolute sack of arse. Sport, eh? Who needs it? Next, Emmanuel says, Dudes, tell me, where do you get those wallpapers? Oh, it's Jingle O'Clock. Wall.alphacoders.com Wall.alphacoders.com That's where my wallpapers come from. Wall.alphacoders.com James Smart says, I'm on holiday in sunny Florida and still watching your show. I mean, I really hope you're at the very least watching this show while lying on a beach with a pina colada in your hand, you crazy bloody fool. Or even better, you're in Disney World, you're in the queue for It's a Small World and you're watching it on your phone with the speakers cranked up to 100%. Just got this image of a small child turning to his mum and saying, Mum, what's piss flaps? 
And James continues, I'm really liking the Nothing Phone 2, but do I swap from the Oppo Find X3 Pro? I mean, I'd say as long as the Find X3 Pro is still treating you right, as long as the battery hasn't balked up or anything like that, then we just stick with that bad boy. Matt Cox says, please wear a hidden mic and camera to the Nothing launch and challenge whichever pretentious celebs they get to appear there to drink in games and then film the results. That's a great idea, but the problem with that these days is I have the alcohol tolerance of a diabetic hamster. Literally, even wee Jimmy Cranky could drink me under the table. And as you can probably tell from that reference, the other problem is I don't actually know any modern celebrities. The only celebrities I recognise on the likes of I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here are the 1970s pop star U Tree specials. So not only would I not know who to challenge, but it would probably be an absolute disaster even if I did. Next up, DGAB28 says, My boss caught me watching this video at work. She said, if I don't get the hell off YouTube, then I'm fired. So naturally, I now have time to binge your entire channel. I mean, I guess I should heartily approve of the whole having no job and therefore just marathoning all of my videos in one go strategy, but I don't want, <laughs> don't want you to be unemployed for watching this shower of uh, Advance apologies for completely bollocksing up this pronunciation, but L. Ibakashi says, thoughts on the leaked info about the Zenfone 10, 6.3 inches and 5,000 milliamp hours. I mean, if there is only one Zenfone 10 and it is 6.3 inches, that would make me a very sad panda indeed. I mean, come on, the Zenfone is one of the few compact smartphones remaining. I really hope they do a mini and a max because as it is, I just reshot my best compact phones video, which uh, should be going live next week, by the way, pimp, pimp, pimp. And I swear to God, over half of them were over six inches and it just makes my soul weep. I swear to God, soon my roundup of best compact phones is going to include f***ing tablets. So please don't get all angry in the comments that some of these phones are like 6.1, 6.2 inches. I know, believe me, I know. Next up, John says, the best Macam YouTuber. I don't know, I did uh, see a few videos from a guy who I think, I'm pretty sure he was from Sunderland, who was uh, basically, his entire channel was dedicated to in-depth reviews of Greg's pasties. Gotta say, I was fully invested in his 20-minute deep dive of the cheese and bean melts. Damien says, thank you for answering my question. Your videos are shit. Oh wait, your videos are the shit. The shit. And he actually continues, it's funny how the the makes all the difference between a compliment and an insult. Yeah, yeah, it really does. And it also helps if you have the ability to actually read things, unlike me. And yeah, better make this the last one before I actually just pass out in this chair. Paul says, despite approaching 1 million subs, do your family still ask when you will get a proper job? I mean, yeah, my mum still doesn't understand what it is that I do. When people ask her, she just tells them that I'm unemployed. And when people ask me what I do, I just say I'm one of them YouTube <laughs> with a slightly bashful expression on my face. Gotta own that shit. Anyway, a massive thank you to everyone who commented last week. You lot are legends. Please do feel free to ask me more questions. Throw comments at me down below. We'll try and smash away through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week... This is about next week... And next week, I'll actually be recording this show in South Korea because I'm off there for a few days on a little jaunt with Samsung. Be interesting times. Hopefully, they're not just taking me out there to murder me at their convenience and bury me in their car park. So stay tuned for all that shenanigans next week, same time. And I've got a few other videos going live throughout the week as well. So plenty of stuff being spaffed out on the channel, you lucky dogs, you. In the meantime, have yourselves a bloody wonderful weekend. Thanks, everybody. Love you.